there's a certain danger in free mechanics to using the mass balance equation to predict what is going to happen to the flow. Let me show you what it is. The mass balance equation in free mechanics tells us that rho v a as a mass flow, rho density, v velocity, and a cross section area. And so a common assumption to make is to say that if I increase a, then v must decrease, yeah? and vice versa. If I decrease a, then e must increase. And it's sometimes true, but not always. And let me show you cases where this does not um, this does not work. So let's take a look first at a jet jet engine. And we're looking here at a Phantom, a jet from the 1960s, not the latest technology, uh, but still the principles remain in modern engines today. We're looking at the engine of that, of that aircraft here. So the engine built into the fuselage of the Phantom is also the engine that's built onto the Gulf Stream 4, a nice jet of NASA that you see here. Um, it's a Rolls-Royce Spey turbofan engine. Not the most modern engine um, you can find, but again, the principles remain from today. If you take that engine here off the airplane, remove the covers, uh, you would get this machine here. Uh, this is the inlet of the of the engine and the outlet would be on the other side over there. And if you would remove now these panels here in the middle, then you would find the combustion chamber. The combustion chamber from a Rolls Royce Spey looks like this. This is the combustion chamber from that engine over there, this, this side. And in this engine, uh, this combustion chamber, uh, the fuel comes in into the, uh, the middle here as a nozzle that would spray a very small mass flow of, of fuel in the center um, and the air would come in through uh, this part here would swirl around the fuel, mix with it, combust and then here the hot gases would outlet into the turbine where it would spin the turbine and run the engine over there. So what happens inside here? The air comes in here at some temperature, which is already pretty high, but by the time it crosses the combustion chamber and has mixed with the fuel and burnt, um, the air comes in here at extremely high temperature. And doing so, its density has changed. Its density has decreased by a huge amount because suddenly it has expanded. And so even though the area here is much larger than the area he in here at the inlet, the velocity has increased because the density has decreased by a great deal. So be careful when you say that when area decreases, velocity must increase or vice versa, because this assumes in the background that the density is constant, which is not always the case. Yeah. So uh, the math says if this is only true if rho remains constant, and rho uh, may remain constant for water flows, like so, yes, but uh, not if there's heat transfer and not if there's expansion or contraction of the fluid. So be careful, it's a classical result in supersonic flow, for example, flow faster than sound, that if you decrease the area, then you also decrease the velocity because the density increase. Rho VA is always the same. It's the same at the inlet of the combustion chamber as the outlet, um, but all three parameters change, not just two of them. Another way to get this equation wrong and to make this assumption wrong, that if you increase the area or decrease the area, even when density remains constant, is as follows. Now let's take a water pipe, let's take a hose of water and let's put our thumb into this, yeah? So suppose it's just summer and your friends um, are over there and they're sunbathing and what you have at your disposal is a water hose and you take the hose out and the water is running out and what you want to do of course is to run an experiment to verify whether this rho VA thing is working um, in the general direction of your friends who are sunbathing over there. And so what do you do? Of course you reduce the area and this will increase the velocity. And you know that, you have that feeling, everybody has played with a hose before. The question is, until which point does it work? Um, because you certainly know that the more you constrain the outlet area and the faster the flow goes. But if you constrain it too much, then you end up with just a drip over here. So what's going on? You reduce the area and you also reduce the velocity. And the answer is, you reduce the area, you reduce the velocity, and you reduce the mass flow. So the mass flow at this section of the pipe is still equal to the mass flow at that section of the pipe. Um, but the total mass flow is not the same as before. Yeah? So you have to be careful with uh, how you manipulate this equation where you say, I decrease the area, therefore I increase the velocity. It's not always true. Yeah? So let's look, look at the mathematical side of this. Yeah? There is no causal relationship. Just because you have increased the area doesn't mean that you have decreased the velocity and vice versa. 
a2 may mean that v a2 decreasing may mean that v2 is increasing but there's not a guarantee that a2 v2 remains a constant so you may kill off the flow inside the pipe just because you have increased the losses to such a point that it's not possible for the flow to exit anymore yeah so be very careful with those uh, those two equations the lesson is yeah, if you're using the mass balance to predict velocity yeah a mass balance equation to predict velocity then you also must ask yourself what force is required what is the pressure change required to move this fluid along and what is the power involved if you do not do that you may find yourself describing flows that are completely irrealistic